All right. So I've got about 20 slides to talk through. Um, you know, if, if someone has a question, if something isn't clear, um, you're, you're probably going to have to shout it out because I can't see hands raised or, or other things. Um, or, you know, I will certainly have time to, to answer any questions at the end, too. So uh, I'm, I'm going to give kind of a brief overview and, and then we can chat further. So this is our third session of How is Moda Doing? Um, and uh, it's, it's just been really fun to be able to connect with you in this way. Um, uh, here in Elkhorn, we are back to a, a pretty normal schedule for visitor hours. We're open seven days a week. Um, our, um, we've, we've shrunk our days a little bit. We find that that actually is a lot easier for staff to facilitate visitor services and then preparing in the morning and, and closing up in the evening. So, so we've made some adjustments as, as many other businesses have as we've reopened. Genealogy Center is open for, for on-site um, patrons Tuesday through Fridays. Bestemores is still open by appointment only, but we're, um, we're starting to see school groups coming, a small handful of them. And overall, I would say we are at about 60%, maybe 65% of comparable months attendance um, from this year to, to 2019. So um, certainly not back to normal, but, but it, we definitely feel the steady flow of visitors. And financially, we are still in a very solid position. We still have a good, a good cash um, basis on hand. We are debt free. Um, we were able to receive both uh, both first draw and second draw PPP loans, and both of those have been forgiven. So we truly have no current debt. And we benefited from a lot of the federal relief programs. Um, our, our museum, whose annual operating budget is about $1.4 million, we received over half a million dollars in the last 18 months from various federal relief programs. So those programs really did what they were designed to do. Um, they, they allowed us to keep going. They allowed us to keep our full staff team employed. Um, we had no layoffs, no uh, uh, salary reductions, and we did not have to dip into our cash reserves to continue operating. So, so that, that's great. And we are, have more members than we have since February 2020. Um, so, so people have really stayed engaged. They've stayed um, generous for the museum. Our last fiscal year showed uh, even in the heart of the pandemic that people still were able to support and wanted to support what we were doing. So, so it allows us to, to emerge from all of this in a very strong position and, and with confidence. But as we emerge, we still have to balance in-person and ongoing virtual programs. Um, you know, the whole, our whole society has become so much more familiar with digital programs, virtual programs. But now that we can do some in-person things, how do we strike that balance? And we'll, we continue to, to work on that. Um, we've been changing up our exhibits as we, as we usually do. We've been doing research. We're seeing a lot of shopping happening, especially this time of year. And, and our store is busy in person with phone orders and online. And so it's, it's really a, a robust um, retail operation. Um, we still do see though, that some events are still getting canceled or postponed. Um, some events that we would normally kind of annually have a presence at have have been canceled yet for this fall. So so we're we can't plan with quite as much confidence for future travels, future commitments as as we're used to. But um, but we're still we're we're navigating our way forward. I know a lot of you have not had an opportunity to visit the museum this summer. Um, our major exhibition is about weddings, which was a really fun way to pull artifacts from our own collection. None of the artifacts on view were borrowed. They were all wedding dresses, wedding gifts, invitations, printed materials from, from our collection and the stories that we were able to tell. We were able to supplement that with photographs and memories and narratives from 
um, from other people in our museum family. And so that's been that's been a fun way to look at these, you know, a, a, a ritual and a tradition that touches all of our lives and how it's changed over time. We just closed our summer art exhibit, which featured Lisi Vanga and her son, Jens Vanga. Lisi is a painter and Jens is a photographer. And this, this photograph here is an example of what he does. He likes seeing architectural landscapes through the reflection of other architectural materials. And so that's, that's really what he focused on. And so uh, it was just kind of fascinating to to be able to recognize some of these slightly distorted um, cityscapes um, but that was that was a lovely uh, show to to have on view and it is just now closed um, and in order to make room for papier clip this is our next art exhibit and and I'm sure you know all of you are familiar with the, the kind of the Danish tradition of paper cutting Hans Christian Andersen being kind of one of the most famous early paper cutting artists, but that a lot of a lot of Danish traditions include paper cutting, whether it's Christmas ornaments or gekkebrev around Easter. Um, but uh, Dia has done a wonderful job creating a, a larger global exhibition um, highlighting these Danish and Scandinavian traditions, but including examples from um, from China, from Mexico. Um, other non-Danish American uh, paper cutting artists. And so it truly is a multicultural exhibition, a wonderful example of how our museum can, can stay true to our mission, but, but also provide a context for, for some of the materials, traditions, and expressions that we, that we specialize in. So, so that's really been wonderful. And it's been especially wonderful to earn the support of um, Local local members and their family, um, uh, Nielsen and Justa Overgaard are are um, no longer no longer living, but their children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren took on this exhibition as a family project and and agreed to um, make a lot of contributions to in order to make it possible. So as a family, they have um, they have made this exhibit possible. Um, their Ma the, their matriarch, Nagesta Overgaard, was particularly known for her promotion um, and, and uh, sharing of Danish folk arts um, and handcrafts. And so it's a wonderful way to remember their legacy. And if you can't make it to Elkhorn to see it, well, maybe you can see it in Minneapolis next summer um, or in uh, Decorah, Iowa at the Westerheim Norwegian American Museum next fall. So we're excited that this can also travel to other communities. And our other traveling exhibits are on the road and going to elsewhere um, around the, the country. Our New Nordic Cuisine exhibit um, just opened or will open soon. Um, my apologies, Dia, that I don't have the opening date in my head at the Yemkomst Center in Moorhead, Minnesota. Uh, and so it will be there um, through the holiday season and, and the early winter and then move to Chicago next year. Art Nouveau Innovation is about to close in Flint, Michigan at the Flint Institute of Art and will later be on view at the Dubuque Museum of Art um, in, in this coming spring. So both of those are larger artifact, um, you know, three-dimensional uh, based exhibits that, that really kind of help bring our museum to, to the country. And then, as I mentioned, we are beginning to travel out and about too. And what's most exciting is that three of our staff members have the opportunity to travel to Denmark and really build uh, connections and networks that, um, that will further enhance our ability to, to stay relevant and have the resources and expertise available to us. Um, uh, for those of you who have been watching um, Cheyenne, Cheyenne's visits uh, in, pictured in the middle. She's our archivist and outreach associate. She is spending three months in Denmark um, visiting every archival collection to really seek ways to, uh, to overlap our interests in Danish American immigration and history and see what kind of collaborations and kind of at least mutual awareness might come out of that. Um, 
Nikki uh, Christensen, our communication specialist, will be spending uh, basically going on a film shoot, <laughs> several film shoots to, in Denmark in early December um, to add to our content for our Nordic Cuisine YouTube channel. This is part of the New Nordic Cuisine Project, um, being able to meet with people involved in the food industry and restaurant in industry in Denmark and share those stories with our audience here. And Dia Nagaraj is our exhibitions curator. Um, she will be taking a research trip in the spring for an upcoming exhibition that will explore the intersection of Danish values and environment, agriculture, and sustainability. And so um, this spring, she'll be able to go to, to Denmark and meet with some of the policymakers, workers, and, and kind of get a sense of how those values um, play out in Denmark. And then we'll be looking to explore the parallel stories here in Danish America too. So these are all three really exciting opportunities that really um, build our, our staff knowledge and capacity to, to tell interesting, relevant stories. And we continue to provide a lot of online programs to develop them and share them. Um, our brown bag lunch series still is mostly happening online. Although today, just today, we did a hybrid brown bag lunch where we um, created the, the program as an online program set to premiere and launch at noon today. But we also invited community members to come and gather and have some coffee and bring their lunches. And we all watched it together on a large digital screen. And so that, that allowed us to really enjoy the best of both worlds, provide that uh, opportunity for people to gather, see their friends, come to the museum in person, as well as really use the resources that virtual programs make available to us, um, whether it's a speaker um, in another time zone or, or in another nation. <laughs> Um, those, those are some of the opportunities that, that virtual programs have opened. So, so we're seeking a ways that we can kind of have those win-win situations there. One of the newer online programs that we've been involved in is the National Danish Book Club and Literary Event Series. And so you can see at the bottom logos, this is a really a collaborative effort um, with a lot of different Danish and Scandinavian organizations. Our role is to facilitate some of the author events and interviews um, that will then be shared online. And so you can discuss a, a work of contemporary Danish literature in the book club, but then also hear a conversation either with the author or with a literary scholar um, who can talk to that work. So, so this is, this is a, new, a new program that we're excited and, and proud to be um, a part of. And we continue to add to our Nordic Cuisine channel. We have two YouTube channels, one for the Nordic Cuisine story and one for kind of everything else the museum does. And um, what's interesting is to see how very, very popular the Nordic Cuisine channel is. Um, the, this is an old screenshot here. We're well over um, 1,400 subscribers. And, and, and the popularity and success of this is one reason why um, Nikki going to, to cre uh, create new content and, and to be able to tell fresh stories is, is so important to keep this a, a, a lively and fresh opportunity. At the Genealogy Center, they have been full, full on um, providing their research services, welcoming patrons on site who are doing research, assisting them. Um, and uh, they we have been looking also into how our genealogy center fits and compares to similar organizations that offer those services, whether those are other kind of ethnic and immigration organizations, other nonprofits, other museums, or whether they are professional genealogists and, and how, do they, um, how do they compare in the services they offer the fees they charge. And based on that survey, one of the things we learned is that our museum is one of the few kind of nonprofit institutions that offers the depth of research services that we do. Um, as a lot of other places will only, will only do one, maybe two hours of research for you. And 
you know, you just can't get very far in family history research with, with just a couple of hours. The other thing we learned is that for the people who are actually professional genealogists and, and are going to the depths that, that so many of our patrons um, are, are looking for, they are not charging by the hour, they're charging by a package um, where you actually say what the outcome you want and based on kind of the experience of the researcher, they know how complicated that request is likely to be. And so you basically identify the outcome at the beginning and you pay that appropriate package fee. And then it, it leaves a lot more leeway on how much time is actually spent. So, um, so the genealogy center will be shifting to that uh, to a new fee structure based on packages. I've listed the different packages here, introductory, basic, standard family, brick wall and heritage. And I love the, the brick wall that they came up with this brick wall package. Basically, if you've been doing your own research and you're stuck, you can send what you've got to the genealogy center and they will go through and kind of check your work every step and make sure that you didn't miss something or, or uh, is there another clue that, that you could pursue? If you have hit the brick wall, you come to you come to the genealogy center. Um, this structure will will be implemented as of January first of next year. So any new research requests coming in in January will will be according to this new structure. Looking ahead, we've got a lot of things on our plate. That's nothing new, um, but I thought I'd give you a preview of some of these things. We have just been in conversation with the world tour of the National Danish Performance Team. Um, this is the elite gymnastics team that does a world tour every other year. And um, next February and March, they will be traveling the Midwest. And so we have just been talking with the US coordinator about hosting the team for a live performance in Elkhorn at the very end of February. They'll be in Des Moines um, and then they'll circle to Elkhorn and then on to Kentucky, Ohio, and finally end in Chicago. So that'll be a, a, a central US loop. Um, so, so this is exciting. Um, we've got to find a lot of host families to, to give some, um, uh, uh, host some, some gymnasts for a few days. Um, but they were last, this team was last in, in Elkhorn in 2010, and it was just a phenomenal performance. They, they just are, are really impressive. Um, if you've ever had a chance to see them on their tours, it's, it's a very impressive thing. So, so we're excited to, to bring them back to our community. And sometimes we just have to do the mundane things like replacing the carpet. <laughs> this is another uh, winter project um, uh, based on the, the schedule of the carpet installers. We might have to close down for a couple days as they're you know, working in the lobby area and in other public spaces. So if you're planning a visit to the museum in January or February, watch our website, watch our social media, give us a call. Um, we, we might have to interrupt our public hours to accommodate the carpet um, deinstallation and then new carpet installation. So, um, but uh, since the carpet we've got now was first installed when the building opened in 1994, I'd say it did a pretty good job. <laughs> uh, you know, more than 25 years later, it's finally time to replace it. So that's, that's a project. Some of our upcoming exhibitions, um, our main exhibit for next summer is Tattoo, Identity and in Ink. And yes, there is a Danish connection. This gentleman, for those of you who are not familiar with this photograph, is Denmark's King Frederick IX. He was known as a particularly tattooed monarch um, dating from his service in the Danish Navy in his early uh, adulthood. Um, so that will be our major exhibition this, uh, this coming summer. And, and we look forward to, to really, again, um, setting a Danish and Scandinavian uh, story within a global context and really inviting people to, to explore something that's you know, pretty familiar to, to a, lot of, a lot of our community members. We're also looking ahead um, to a, a really wonderful opportunity that our museum has 
um, to build our Danish ceramics collection. And this really began um, in our conversations with the collector uh, from whom we borrowed every piece that's in our current Art Nouveau traveling exhibition. Um, that is all based upon a, a private collection. And, um, and in conversations with that collector and in learning more about his collection, he has, has offered to give his collection or a portion of it to the museum so that it can stay as a cohesive uh, you know, story of Danish ceramics. This is an extraordinary opportunity for, for our museum, both as a artifact resource, as a way to tell new and different stories, as a way to potentially reach new and different audiences, um, as a basis from which to, to, to build future exhibitions that we can share with, with the country. And, and already through our experience with the Art Nouveau exhibit, we have seen that there is um, you know, intense interest um, from other museums, from other countries. Um, we've been, we've already been in contact with, with ceramics specialists in, in Russia and Denmark and the Netherlands um, and fielded inquiries from other places. So, so this is a, a really, um, really important opportunity for us to, to have a signature collection um, that, that will really help put us on the map in a way that um, that currently no other part of our collection does. So so we're really excited about this and and continuing to to discuss some of the some of the details and opportunities with the collector. Looking a little farther ahead, we've got an anniversary coming up, a big one, 40 years in 2023. And so we are already knowing it's time for a party. We definitely need to party in Elkhorn, and we might party in other places too. Um, this is a this is a big milestone year, and we have so much to celebrate. Um, the achievements of what this institution has done, from starting with a piece of paper with the articles of incorporation and not much else in in 1983. To, to having an accredited museum in a solid, with a solid base of support um, here, here in Iowa in this beautiful facility. So there is a lot to celebrate and it will probably take more than one party. I think we'll, we'll bring the party to a different, different communities around the country. But we have started to narrow down on the Elkhorn event. Um, we are penciling in Sankt often our, our annual midsummer celebration of June 24th, um, that's a Saturday. That will be our big celebration event. We'll still light a bonfire, we'll have music and entertainment, but we'll probably also, you know, put up a tent, have a, you know, have a supper, and we'll be collaborating with the Danish American Heritage Society to host their next conference here at the museum in that tent with those tables and chairs um, that weekend. And so there will be a lot of different activities, a lot of reasons for people to, to plan to, to visit Elkhorn for, for a day or for the weekend. And um, we're, we're looking forward to it. But, but yeah, it is not too early to start planning those things a year and a half away. So we also have invited um, some uh, longtime supporters and and very kind of knowledgeable people uh, both about about the institution and about how can we pull off this event and this anniversary successfully. So I'd like to introduce you to our 40th anniversary advisory committee. Um, the, all of these people have either served on the board in the past or are currently serving on our board of directors. And, and can really help us um, make sure that we, uh, we really make the most of, of, this, of this opportunity to celebrate what, what we've achieved and to, to focus attention on, on what, we can, what we can accomplish now and, and in the future. And in the meantime, uh, had, to, had to borrow this image. If you haven't ordered your Christmas cards from the museum, this is the image. <laughs> um, it's a it's a great great reminder of of the fun of the season, 
And so we are entering that time of year. And so um, hope that you all are getting ready for some, uh, some of your uh, holiday hygge. And uh, I, I hope for enough snow to go skiing like these happy Nissa are doing. Are there questions?